Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is lecture 4C, where we're going to talk about the problem of balancing the different doses of X chromosome genes in males and females. The problem arises because males have one X, females have two, and it turns out that the relative dosages of genes matters a lot for normal development. To give males and females the same dosage, mammals carry out a process called X inactivation, where one of the X chromosomes is turned off early in female development. So as we said, the X chromosome has many important genes, genes for a lot of different functions. And you might think, well, yeah, so what? We've all got at least one X chromosome. We should be OK. But females have twice as many doses. They have two copies of each gene. And if the genes in females are expressed at the same level from the X chromosome, from each X chromosome as from the single chromosome in males, females are going to have twice as much of every protein that's made from the X chromosome as males do. But they'll have the same amount of all the other proteins that are made from the autosomes. So that creates an imbalance within the cell with some genes, the 2000 X chromosome genes, being in different proportions in males and in females. Now, you might think, well, this isn't really a problem. Um, doesn't We learned about haplosufficiency in module 3, where, you know, one copy, two copies, as long as one functional copy was good enough to give normal function. Doesn't that apply here? Um, yes, we did. Oh, just to remind you what haplosufficiency was, in the context of talking about why defective alleles were very often recessive to functional alleles, I pointed out that for many functions, having half the normal amount of protein is enough to get the, react, the job done. And the term to describe this is haplosufficiency, being haploid for a functional copy of the gene. Having one functional copy is enough to accomplish the same functional task as is normally accomplished by having two functional copies of the gene. So why does it matter that men have one copy of the X chromosome and females have two? Well, the problem is that many gene functions are not haplosufficient. Um, you'll remember this diagram from Module 3, where we diagram the different kinds of relationships of effects of pairs of alleles on phenotype. Genes at this corner of the triangle were ones that exhibited complete dominance. And the red dots indicated the large number of genes that exhibited complete dominance of a functional allele over a defective allele because they were haplosufficient. Half the usual amount of protein was enough. But there's all these genes on the rest of the triangle, genes where both phenotypes are seen when you have two different alleles, genes where you get blending, you get an intermediate phenotype between the functional gene and the defective gene. So all of these genes are not going to be haplosufficient at all. Now, Here's again our drawing of the genes on the X chromosome. Each of these little colors is a gene. Some of these genes are going to be haplosufficient. A two-fold difference in dosage isn't going to change phenotype. But many others are going to be only sort of a little bit haplosufficient. A loss of one functional copy may cause only a very small phenotypic problem, so small that we wouldn't normally notice it. And as long as only a few genes are affected, the developing embryo and fetus can usually cope. But if many genes are, are affected, then the imbalances kind of interact with each other and build up to bigger problems. Further, for many genes, even a twofold difference in dosage will cause a very significant imbalance in gene activity. So I've diagrammed here just schematically that on so X chromosome, as on autosomes, there's a mixture of genes with these different properties, including many genes where a twofold difference in dosage is going to cause a serious problem. 
Now, this kind of problem isn't unique to humans. It arises in any species that uses sex chromosomes to determine sexual development. So here we've diagrammed humans, but we see a similar situation in fruit flies, where females have two X chromosomes, and like humans, males have an X and a Y chromosome. We even see it in the worm C. elegans, where even though they use a different sex determination system, if you have just one, they don't have a Y chromosome at all. If you have just one X, you develop as a male. If you have two Xs, you develop as a female. But in each case, there's large numbers of genes on the X chromosome, and there's a serious imbalance between the amount of protein that's going to be produced in the male and in the female. The phenomenon is called, the solution generally is called dosage compensation, and there's different mechanisms. The mechanism that's used by mammals is called X inactivation. Oops. X. So here's um, Wonder Woman's chromosomes early in embryonic development. One chromosome is shut down completely. It's bound with chromosomal proteins in a way that prevent transcription of all the genes in the chromosome. And so only one X chromosome is functional, just as in males. And this chromosome remains turned off throughout development and in the adult. It's off for the whole life of the organism. Now, we talked about how in a developing fetus, it's not till about six weeks of development that the tissues begin to develop as female tissues or male tissues in response to expression of the SRY gene from the Y chromosome. But in fact, the developing embryo knows whether it's a male or female embryo at a much earlier state. I use knows in the sense of can detect through biochemical and gene regulation processes. So much earlier in development, long before the tissue-specific changes take place, X inactivation occurs, and one of the two X chromosomes is shut off in each cell. Now, I've split it here so you can see that in the male, the X chromosome, the single X chromosome, stays on in all the cells. And then at six weeks of development, male tissues develop. In a female fertilized egg, undergoes cell divisions, but at an early stage in development, maybe when there's only a few hundred cells present, each cell turns off one X chromosome. And perhaps surprisingly, each cell decides for itself which X chromosome to turn off. So some, X, some cells will turn off the X chromosome inherited from the mother. Some cells will turn off the X chromosome inherited from the father. And this means that as the embryo and the fetus develops, each of these cells is going to give rise to a patch of cells, a patch of tissue that is expressing either the paternal X chromosome or the maternal X chromosome. We'll talk more about this in the next lecture. So we've talked about why gene dosage matters and how chromosomal sex determination makes it necessary to have some me mechanism to compensate for the different dosages of X chromosomes in male and females. In mammals, the mechanism is X inactivation. One X chromosome is turned off. It happens early in development and each cell independently picks an X chromosome to inactivate. Now, in the next lecture, we'll talk about the consequences of this independent turning off of different X chromosomes in different cells, and we'll use as our illustration the calico cat. I hope to see you there.